Celebrations mark the end of British rule in Belize, but our troops will stay on. Hello again. The Union flag was lowered for the last time last night in the tiny country of Belize. She's got her independence after 120 years under British control. The little state in Central America was founded by shipwrecked British sailors, and it's the last place on the American continent to get independence from Britain. But Belize has already got its problems. One of its neighbours, Guatemala, has claimed for years that Belize really belongs to her, and she's not recognising Belize as an independent state. So independence ceremonies weren't, wasn't a wholehearted celebration, Many local people didn't want to break off the ties with Britain because of fears about Guatemala. And few saw the new blue and red flag of Belize raised. But despite that, the country became independent from Britain last night. About a third of the 140,000 Belizeans live in Belize City. Much of the rest of the country is swamp and jungle. And many of the people there are very poor. Still, the Guatemalans who've been demonstrating against the independence today would still like to control Belize. But Britain has warned Guatemala not to try to invade. Prince Michael of Kent was at the independence celebrations, as Martin Bell reports. Prince Michael of Kent, cousin to the Queen, is going the rounds of some of the remoter places in Belize. And this is a country where just about everywhere is remote, except Belize City itself. He's watching cultural displays and dances in a variety of costumes and rhythms. This one, a Mayan sword dance. There are many others. The prince is in the process of doing what the royal family have been doing regularly for more than 20 years, giving independence to countries that used to be British. It's a familiar routine. The Union Jack is put away, the country runs its own affairs, and the British pack up and go home. Except that in this case, the British are not going home. It was as a token of that that the prince also visited an army camp in the hill country here and talked to the troops there, the Gurkhas and Gordon Highlanders, who are staying on after independence. The government of the new nation doesn't want the British troops to leave because of the threat of invasion from neighbouring Guatemala. In this corner of the country, the Gurkhas, who are part of the British army, man border posts, they showed the prince some of the tents and bivouacs they use, and they discourage the Guatemalans from trying to come across. So far, it's worked. And because of the dispute with Guatemala, the new nation of Belize is going to need the troops to stay for a long time to come. Martin Bell in Punta Gorda, Belize, for Newsround. The leader of the organization which represents headmasters of top public schools today sharply criticized the government's education cuts. At their conference at Oxford, the chairman, Mr. John Thorne, said that the education of nine out of ten children in Britain was being allowed to decay, and he blamed the government's policies. He pointed out that while some parents poured money into schools like his, where they pay to send their children, the state schools, which educate most of the nation's children and don't charge, were suffering from an appalling and criminal lack of money. He said anyone who cares about education must be concerned about the government's present cuts. One of Britain's most famous landmarks, Land's End in Cornwall, is up for sale, and there are fears that it could be bought by foreigners for many millions of pounds. Land's End is the bottom left-hand tip of England, and beyond that there's nothing but about 2,000 miles of sea until the coastline of North America. From Land's End, Tony Byers has more details about the sale of this historic headland. There have been rumours that Land's End might be sold for some time, but the owner, Mr Charles Neve Hill, has always preferred not to comment. The area is an important part of Britain's heritage and attracts thousands of visitors every year. The thought that ownership could pass overseas, perhaps to an American, has already caused concern. The National Trust was one of the first to react. It already owns hundreds of miles of coastline and a spokesman has described Land's End as the jewel in the crown. The Trust hasn't the money to buy the land, but has been talking of launching a national appeal. Today, the agents who will be handling the sale said it would include the famous First and Last Inn and the Clifftop Walks, but details of how much land would be sold and the price had yet to be worked out. At the moment, Mr Neve Hill is in America. The row is still going on in the struggle for one of the top jobs in the Labour Party. It came after this weekend's rowdy scenes at a meeting in Birmingham and the angry words that followed. Here's Paul. 
It all began on Saturday when Mr Healy tried to speak at the meeting, but a group in the crowd kept shouting him down. He had hoped to make an important speech as part of his campaign to keep his job as deputy party leader. And even the leader, Mr Foote himself, had trouble being heard. After the meeting, Mr Healy accused supporters of one of his rivals, Mr Tony Benn, of organising the shouting. For months now, the choice of a new deputy leader has been dominating the life of the Labour Party. There are three candidates, Mr Healy, Mr John Silken and Mr Tony Benn. Mr Healy is deputy leader at the moment, but he was chosen only by Labour MPs in the House of Commons. The rules have changed now so that other groups in the Labour Party can also have a say about who has the party's top jobs. Local party workers and trade union members, as well as MPs, now do the choosing. Most Labour MPs are believed to support keeping Mr Healy as deputy leader, but their choice isn't the only one. Local party workers all over the country have an equal say, and they seem likely to back Mr Benn. But the group with the largest say is the trade unions. No one is quite sure at the moment which of the three candidates will get the greatest union support. And the name of the winner will be known next Sunday. And even though it's just the deputy leader of the Labour Party that's being chosen, this decision is vital. The quarrels over this last weekend, but the group with the largest say is the trade unions. No one is quite sure at the moment which of the three candidates will get the greatest union support. And the name of the winner will be known next Sunday. And even though it's just the deputy leader of the Labour Party that's being chosen, this decision is vital. The quarrels over this last weekend aren't by any means the first during the long leadership campaign. And the fear among many inside the Labour Party is that whoever wins, the arguments have caused deep wounds which will be hard to heal. In Glasgow today, Prince Charles appealed for more disabled people to be given the chance to work. He was speaking at a conference and exhibition for the disabled, and during his visit, he decided to try out some of the new aids on display. Alan Douglas reports. Prince Charles flew by helicopter to Glasgow from Balmoral, but at the exhibition in Glasgow's city chambers, he transferred to a much slower form of transport. The tricycles, which can be used equally well by disabled children and adults, were just part of the wide range of aids for the handicapped on display. The Prince is patron of the International Year and he told the audience of employers and manufacturers that he's taken the role very much to heart. I myself took on a, a disabled person uh, in my office this year, particularly because of all the extra work uh, with getting married. and. Uh, it's been a great success. And finally, London's Heathrow Airport has got an itchy problem. Staff and passengers are complaining that they're under attack from armies of bugs and pests. They say they're being bitten while checking baggage and even while sitting at information desks. An airport spokesman said they hadn't been given permission to land. And that's all from Newsround. See you tomorrow.